Hi there, my name is Andrew Sweeney and the purpose of this video is to introduce Parallax Sangha, formerly the Manifesto Media Academy. I'd like to talk about our community and some exciting new changes we have made, as well as the move from the Manifesto European Men's Network to our new platform for men and women at Parallax. First, I will read our vision statement, which will be followed by a loose dialogue with Owen Cox, the co-founder of our community. Parallax is an online newspaper, podcast platform, and educational academy started by Tom Amark and run by Tom and myself. I'll leave relevant links in the comments below. So what is Parallax Sangha? Formerly the Manifesto Media Academy, and now part of the Parallax Academy, Parallax Sangha is an online platform dedicated to the study, practice, and contemplation of matters of soul and psyche. We are a network of friends, writers, teachers, and podcasters offering online study circles and public events. Note, we use the Buddhist word Sangha to indicate a sacred community, which runs through gifts and donations rather than any profit motive. However, we are not a church or temple and we don't promote any particular religion. I will now talk about our private groups and our public activities the sacred and profane aspect of our work, if you like. This year, there will be invite-only groups, but we will welcome the application of new members who will have to pass the test of maturity and friendship. Our private meetings include a study group, a men's group, and a cinema club at the moment. New groups are arising, and we encourage our members to create their own unique projects. We also offer personal online coaching and mentoring for those who are interested. Our move from Manifesto to Parallax will provide us with greater autonomy and allow us to invite women into the fold, since there is no reason for our content to be limited to men. On the other hand, we have kept a men's circle for those interested in men's work and have plans to work with women and women's groups. Traditional communities have always recognized the virtue of both separate and combined spaces for men and women. In this next stage of our development, we aim to work with differentiated and undifferentiated groups. Besides private sessions, we will continue to offer public bi-weekly online events and podcasts with Q&A, which are open to everyone. For these, we will invite the most vital thinkers, philosophers, and luminaries of the day. Furthermore, besides our weekly online meetings and events, we will gather a couple times a year somewhere in Europe for some serious conversation, fun, and games. Our syllabus this year will revolve around three main areas, soul and psyche, magic and religion, sex and art. This will involve a study of classic psychoanalysis, esoteric religion, and the humanities in general. Rather than work with a linear syllabus like last year, we will spiral between philosophy, art, and religion and try to integrate our most powerful themes. Furthermore, we will look at the hidden or esoteric traditions, including Western Hermeticism, Jewish and Christian symbolism, and Tantric and Sutric Buddhism. In our ecstatic and experimental first-year launch, we studied unrepresented and politically incorrect thinkers like Marsha McLuhan, René Girard, and Ivan Illich. We hosted people from all over the so-called liminal web, philosophers like Jonathan Pajo, Alexander Bard, and John Verveke. In short, we created a vibrant community. By the end of the year, we began to reinvent ourselves and give members greater autonomy and involvement in the group. Within the reinvention of education in the digital age today, the aim of Parallax Sangha is to cultivate deep and convivial learning friendships, which were always at the heart of the humanities and authentic education in general. Our mission in the age of technocrats, netocrats, and robot managers, and while the present world system threatens to collapse, is to be a bright island in the digital fog. Today we are living in apocalyptic times. However, the root meaning of the word apocalypse is to uncover or reveal dharma or truth. And perhaps we are truly living in a meaning apocalypse, even more than a meaning crisis, 
which is John Verveke's understated term. Paradoxically, the meaning apocalypse and the seismic paradigm shift provide a unique opportunity for deep education and personal development. If you are an innovative and curious seeker who likes to think deeply and play seriously, please apply to Parallax Sangha or join us at one of our public events. And now, a conversation with Owen Cox. One note, I like that notion of a meaning apocalypse as opposed to a crisis, just because of, as you touch on, the uh, the meaning of apocalypse also meaning the kind of the revealing. Mm-hmm. Like things falling apart. And so it's not just a crisis, oh, there's a meta crisis, everything's kind of gone wrong, but also there's just a dramatic shift and a potential to go deeper, to go more truthful, to go more honest and uh, and start to kind of build the foundations of a kind of new type of culture, which is, uh, which is interesting. But maybe the kind of place to start with um, really responding to that is to offer a few of kind of my own reflections on where I think we came from and where we seem to be at now. Good. Because... Um, yeah, I was doing techno social for a couple of years before we started the uh, the media academy. You were doing the um, your various podcasts under Parallax and the Sweeney versus Bard and your various writings as well. And my sense when we started up the media academy, a large sort of thing that it was trying to do was to see if we could get a group of guys interested who we could start to kind of teach and explore the ideas that we'd been working with in the podcasts and with the, the writing and so forth. And so almost trying to communicate and digest whatever the, the conversation that was happening amongst philosophers and technologists and critics was and, um, and, and bring people into that, I suppose, and bring them up to that level where, um, I, I certainly felt like the perspectives I got exposed to through doing techno social really enabled me to kind of see what was going on in the world at the moment in a different way and start to navigate it slightly differently, which seems to be working quite well. And so there's a sense of, okay, can we bring other people into that? What has happened over the course of the year? Well, one of the things is that we actually taught all of that stuff. And so then there's begin this question of uh, what is the thing now and where does the thing go now? And in our recent conversations, what's been interesting is to notice that both of us are kind of honing in on this direction of art and the psyche and mysticism and magic and religion, which is slightly differentiated from the conversations around technology and philosophy that have been going on. Mm -hmm. And and that's interesting. Um, I think perhaps because because we've been living in this moment of radically new technology and the philosophers have kind of been first on the scene making trying to make sense of it but now certainly i feel um a kind of uh drive to be working more on this layer of culture of art and really understanding what is the human uh what is the human being and how it expresses itself and, and to develop my own capacities for my own uh, my own work, artwork as well, for my own uh, spirituality. And so I think it seems to me like w- with the reading group as well, there's going to be a shift into more of a um, community exploration as opposed to it being, um, uh, say, you or I giving a lecture on a topic that we've deeply researched before or deeply come to explore. It, it's, it's becoming more... Um, multi-directional you might say which is always something that that we noticed as we were doing it that people were saying the most interesting parts of this little experiment are are when it gets very um uh network like when everyone's bouncing ideas back and forth well i was listening today to a definition of tantra um and and one of the the meanings of tantra is to weave together different strands different you know modes of being um and different ways of working, you know, with the mind uh, and the body. And in, in a sense, um, you know, tantra is often, a, you know, a misused word or or a, a word that's used kind of, you know, as something as a placeholder for something we don't understand. But 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 I like the idea, let's say, of 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 weaving a lot of different strands of things together. So it's not like we're moving away completely away from the philosophical 
technological discussion. We're just we just have more of an emphasis in, in this realm. And uh, this, I guess, brings us back to this again to the word apocalypse, because, um, you know, if you look at the revelations in the Bible, it's, it's, it's not it's no longer, you know, the Bible is a kind of narrative that builds up to this explosion, you know, of kind of non nonlinear, non narrative expression almost surrealistic and, and hard to understand. And, and in a way that they build that in a way that's the movement towards, towards Tantra, if that makes any sense to you. It reminds me a bit of that, uh, the essay written by, uh, by your Tantra teacher, right. About how the, the artistic tradition itself has developed into something that's becoming more and more tantric and eventually Zogchen like. Yeah, well, that's 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 a matter of perspective, right? Because we move from the perspective of God being the center of everything. You know, I live in Paris, and let's say in the you know in the in the in the Middle Ages when they built Notre Dame, there was a city of fifty thousand people, like a small town, and they all built a cathedral together. I mean, that's impossible from our own perspective to imagine that. Um, but uh, but and I think but so the, but the point is then we moved into this human uh, perspective, which is total atomization and total individualization and of everything, and we we try to fit everything within a frame, you know, uh, like uh, with the invention of perspective, because often art movements come before philosoph philosophical movements, and the philosophers sort of explain what it was that happened and. Even the artists who are intuiting something, something maybe don't know precisely what they're doing, you know, until later. But but that but what what Tractum Capo was describing is this movement from the God-centered society to the human-centered society to the aperspectival society, which 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 weaves in all kinds of different perspectives um, and and allows the expression of immediate. You know, uh, a, new, a kind of immediate expression. I've heard that's described as, you know, when people used to paint, they would paint a horse, you paint a horse, uh, and you try to paint the horse realistically. Whereas when you move into this new perspective, you paint, you paint the impression of the horse, you know, and, and you, so you, you, you see before you look, rather than you, you look at something and then you describe it. And this goes along with our discussion, I think, uh, of, of media and Marsha McLuhan and moving from, I think he says we're moving into a more acoustic age, from the literary age to a more acoustic age. And so all of these different threads about what we talked about last year, I think our plan is to really de deepen the, uh, that. And, um, and we're, we're calling ourselves a Sangha, not because we're, you know, we're, we're Buddhist in particular, but because we want to be, um, we want this to be a sacred activity. We don't want this to be a banal commercial, you know, kind of thing. Not that we're, I'm against, you know, s s selling things or... Um, no, but we did have an interesting conversation around that, right? Because, because there is so much just kind of, experimentation and exploration and trying to figure out like kind of like the artist you mentioned trying to figure out what is this new medium that we are painting with in the internet and, and doing our organizations with doing our communities with and it does kind of have to seem to have settled on like as a kind of regularly meeting community brotherhood potentially sisterhood now as well um we're going to move away from that traditional kind of business model, the like regular fees thing, and probably move into more of a donation based thing, which is kind of uh, <laughs> radical and a risk, but it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see if that changes at all, how, how the thing's working and whether that frees us up a little bit more actually as well to be a bit more playful with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's, there's always this tension between those two worlds, right? It's like oil and water between the artistic, the spiritual, the the meaning world, and then and then the world where you have to survive and you know put food on the table and uh, and uh, and then and then there's there's all the manipulation and and games that go into that. 
Um, but but uh, but I think that we're, we're trying, I guess, to have a private and a public aspect to our group. And the private is is, is small groups where we, we 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 do create these brotherhoods and and you know again opening up to women now. But we we keep a men's group. Um. So 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 that 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 becomes that becomes kind of a you know I, I've heard in the Jewish tradition that 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 um. You know, you know, you, you sit around a table, basically, and 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 you 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 work through these things, um, and almost that that seems you know you work through spiritual matters or you know intellectual matters or artistic matters, and, and sitting around the table seems to be somehow this kind of spirit, perhaps mm. of what of what we might be doing. Mm. And there is something nice about this sitting around the table i think one of the things that i began to notice through the last year as we were doing the media academy is that um it was a lot more engaging and felt more um genuinely um, stimulating to be a part of than just doing my podcasts uh, kind of going into a room with one or two other people and just having a conversation yeah, it's something about having the the live audience, but also not just a random live audience, but actually the same audience every time. Yeah, and that was our that, that was that was our community, which I don't even know if audience is the correct word because no, I don't think it everybody, is. Everybody, everybody started to participate in it and even start started to create their own projects. So we had this at the beginning. We were part of, you know, the the uh, manifesto men's group, and we had this sort of ambition to create this thing and maybe even make some money and that kind of thing. And what happened was sort of a, a, a positive failure, I think. Like we failed in the sense of of turning it into a business, but we succeeded in the sense of turning it into a, a community of friends. No. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and then the so the people who are a part of our community right now are, you know, they seem to need each other. They seem to be a, a genuine brotherhood. They seem to they communicate a lot with each other. They talk to each other all the time. They're meeting up in Amsterdam, and and so um, so that's the interesting thing um, is is that I, I would have doubted that such a thing would have been possible on Zoom or on, 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 in, in a digital realm that creating an actual community would be possible. But I, th I think, and also, and I think that that first there's the creation of the community, which is sort of the proto thing, and then people go out and meet each other in in, in real life. Yeah, it's just it's interesting to see that that's what's happening at the moment. That's what's possible to happen at the moment. Like I've made very good friends through this thing and collaborators too through this thing, and now they're like you said this multiple events later this year where people will be meeting up to hang out but also to work together like to do serious yeah. work together as well it's like it's um there's a friendship to it but it, it's friendship with a purpose yeah and this is kind of like the magic of it i, I use the word magic you know in a in a, it, because i i wanted this this year talk about explore the certain esoteric traditions where, where they do speak about magic but it's often not what people think it's not some kind of hocus pocus thing it's magic is when you're 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 engaged in in, in in an activity of creation that happens by almost by its own accord and and through relationships does that make sense uh, yeah, so, yeah so i think it's it's the movement from let's say your, your job, you know, where you're employed by a company and you work for the company and you earn a, a living and a salary. It's a difference between that and finding your meaningful vocation, right? Yeah, um, sure. I mean, like I that's can... when when you find your meaningful vocation and, and you end up doing what you're really good at, it looks like magic from the outside. <laughs> it, it looks like something impossible to do because because you're so in your element. And uh, in a sense, that's what I think we're searching for uh, with all the people in the community is, is to help us find, we're all helping each other find our element. 
Absolutely, which takes us back to the kind of theorists of education that were inspiring us when we started up the thing, like Zach Stein, like uh, Ivan Illich. Um, mm. Like Illich's kind of um, <laughs> brutal critique of, uh, of school in society um, and the way that it, it just... Uh, and McLuhan kind of goes in this direction as well, I think. The entire, you might say modern educational media apparatus is set up not to um, help people discover vocations, but to standardize and homogenize for mass performance, mass testing, mass regulation, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, so you end up creating a very efficient ciphers of human beings you know, who can do things, but they're somewhat unhappy. They're, they're not satisfied. They're, they're dealing with, you know, spiritual dissatisfaction. E even when they succeed in, in playing the game, even when they succeed at playing the game. Precisely. And I think so I had a feeling that as we were going through the year, we were, we were providing meaning for people like that, for people who had like people who had sort of stuck in the game and didn't know that, something else was was possible or, or what were hungering for a way out of it and it yes stumbled into the right um online communities because that does seem to be the unifying thread through everything that we're involved with is people trying to get beyond whatever was before uh, like i think that that type of i think you said cipher as a human being perhaps that lifestyle was um existentially tenable at least when the world seemed somewhat predictable and there was at least some kind of guarantee that you might have a comfortable life and a bit of money in the bank at the end of a career but it seems like as the economies now are just going into fucking free fall and world politics is getting more and more mental that old story that old lifestyle the um, well, do the job and earn the money and have the mortgage and you'll be all right, isn't very appealing. It just doesn't scratch the itch anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and I think that, as you say, I think that when people get together, they engage in serious work, but also, uh, also, also, you know, there's a place, playful aspect to it, not in a childish kind of playful. Like I'm gonna, I get sick of the, the language here. And I, well, I, we were discussing that earlier. Is how to find the right terms for this without using neologisms that have become trendy and, and kind of people just it becomes part of an in group if you use words like you know, you know, uh, I don't know, game A and game B and blah blah blah. blah. But we want to, we want to. You know, I always want, I always resist against the the the, uh, the trending neologism because I want to get to something kind of very basic and existential and, and real. Um, and that, and, and I think that we, we kind of we are we are discovering this, which is it was interesting because I suggested the word we were trying to think of a single word for what we're doing right, and I put forward the words school or fraternity, which you kind of turned away from. You were like, no, I don't like those. Um, I mean, maybe fraternity is a bit too. Uh, no, I like the word fraternity, and I, 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 I think that's a great word. I'm glad you you brought it up. It's a great word to 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 retake from its common meaning because fraternities are usually boys clubs, right? They're not serious. They're for kids, you know, who drink a lot and fuck around, you know, during. Um, I'm, I'm sure the original university fraternities and, and sororities and university were a bit more serious, but a, but as the culture became more decadent, you know, the, the image we have of a fraternity is just people getting shit faced and, you know, uh, and and I think that I think that it's a beautiful word that could be could be re rediscovered. But the, again, we started as a men's group, and and but we also want to engage with women this year. So so I didn't want fraternity to be our overarching um, name. And I didn't want school to be either to honor Ivan Illich because, because of his book, De-Schooling Society, where we're not schooling people. We're, we're, we're engaging ourselves in an educational context. Well, that's, yeah, I, I get what you mean now about school to honor Ivan Illich. I think I'm thinking again of going way back with the meaning of school, not 
in the kind of modern definition of it, but as the kind of the early philosophy schools, the early um, like schools and guilds of craftsmen, I guess, um, just like associations of people coming to study. And to yeah, learn. well, I'm fine with that. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine with that as a and, version of school. And, 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 and I belong to a tantric school. So ta- schools, schools of schools with Sangha, um, which means there, there's there's a sacred community, um, and Dharma, which means there's an engagement in truth. Um, that's that's the that's a beautiful, incredibly beautiful thing. Yes, and, and given our interest in the mysteries and the esoteric traditions and the mystery schools, it does start to wonder in my mind if is that what we are trying to build? Yeah, but I wouldn't want to. Um, I I wouldn't want to make that claim yet. No, because it I doesn't thought- feel it doesn't feel humble enough. Because we need to be humble, right? If we start to say we're building a mystery school, then then I, I feel we're 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 getting ahead of ourselves. And I don't know. If, I think I think I think we have to start with just basic community, and then and then see what arises from that. Well, I think perhaps you may be right, and maybe that's the wisdom of the old man speaking to the precocious young man who wants everything on a plate right now. Mm-hmm. But it is a it. it, it it is the most appealing. Those two words to me, school and fraternity, have been the most appealing because, as you kind of said, the, the, there's other stuff that goes around, but it feels just a bit too cliche and corny to me, like community or space or, um, I don't know, I was wondering about associ- association just sounds dry, right? Or we could use the word commune in a way because, you know, that could be another word we could, I mean, I think, I think, I don't know what else to call it. We already called it a sangha. And, and uh, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't know what we are a group of people. So, what do you call a group of people? I mean, if we're going to be mixed gender, that is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, we don't need to answer that now, right? But that's just kind of one of yeah. the things we're thinking through. And if anybody listens yes. to the thought, then and, and and you're in charge, by the way, of making a language sexy because you know when you're 51, sexiness is not that you know important anymore but but i know for you it's it's extremely important it's important in a voyeuristic sense like you know but uh but not in a it's not my primary concern is being sexy well i think it's also to do with actually establishing the identity of the thing and i think we are a we are a unique thing we're not just a, a men's group um yeah. we are not an online course um yeah but we're also not just a kind of group of people coming together to do sense making or whatever you want to say. Yeah. And, and, and so, but it's like part of the kind of fun and the experimentation is I don't think we've really found the word for what it is that we're doing. No, maybe not. Maybe we haven't found the word yet. Kind of developing what it is. And I think I'm actually really excited for what we're going to study this year. Maybe it's worth mentioning that a little bit, as we said, to Mm. go deeper into art and the psyche and into esotericism um the kind of like core areas of interest i think of both of us um so to kind of think through the theorists of the psyche in terms of psychoanalysis both the freudian lineage and the jungian lineage um to be thinking about uh the art critics and especially the art critics that have kind of like like Paglia, like Howard Bloom, who are kind of building out of the psychoanalytic and the Nietzschean tradition of thinking about culture and applying it to the 20th century and indeed the entire history of culture. And then also to start looking at um, the tantric schools, at the hermetic schools. I've been uh, I've been kind of uh, reading up on British esotericism the last uh, month or so, so Crowley and Dion Fortune. And it's like, it's a whole different way of thinking to the philosophy that we've been, st- or that I've been studying up to the present. Yeah. Yeah, and like going and, back, and, and in a way, it's 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 a way of thinking that's more familiar with me be, for for me because because the tantric school that I've evolved with is so involved in symbolism. It's not that there isn't a philosophical element to it, but it that's sort of subordinate to to the, the gnostic ex, direct gnostic experience and the and, and the and, and the work with symbols uh, as portals into uh, certain uh, you know what they're called rasas. Rasas are feeling expression modes of being and then so you work with all these symbols 
and um, and so so I, you know I've been doing that for a while, um, in a particular tradition. But then I also know that I, I need to understand the Western tradition as well, or the Western, the Western arcane tradition, the hidden traditions, the esoteric traditions, the because these these are these are these are also part of the whole you know landscape, and many of them have been sort of pushed underground or hidden or. From the you know the contemporary society, both the contemporary society of es exoteric religion, you know, Christianity, Islam, and, and and you know mainstream religion, and also from from the, the scientific reductionist materialist worldview. So so um, so so that's that's I think people are coming back to that because that needs to be explored, and even scientists and people like that are. Are throwing words around like egregore and um and starting to understand there's collective intelligences at work you know behind things and and um and uh, starting to understand you know what these weirdos in the middle ages were what the hell they were talking about yeah well and it fits kind or of in, in the, the, with in the, the middle point. ages but also in the uh, you know in the in, in the east and in the tantric schools and in the silk road and then in the south of france with all the the different uh, communities, you know, spiritual communities that were around, especially interested in the 12th century. And, and but anyway, um, yeah, but but anyway, I think I think that as we this we live through this apocalyptic moment, everything is just coming up, and 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 all these things are being kind of looked at and, and reflected upon and, and need to be rediscovered and thought about and. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's like a, <laughs> I've been deeply involved with Cadell Lost's uh, Nietzsche course at the moment, so I'm thinking a lot in like in Nietzschean terms as well. And it seems like there's a desire for a return to a a kind of a, a religious practice or a spiritual practice, but that is that is oriented towards being in the body and in the world as opposed to oriented towards some transcendental metaphysics. Yes, yes, def definitely that's that's true. And, and that and, kind and of it, seems to be how the, <laughs> the old, uh, you might say, exoteric religions, at least in the West, kind of died out by being too stuck in rigid otherworldly metaphysics and then the scientific paradigm kind of comes along and replaces one set of uh otherworldly metaphysics really with another world of otherworldly metaphysics which is the laws and the abstractions of nature but still totally disconnected just from the actual practice of being in the body yeah well it's interesting i was listening to james hellman talk about that and he, he was saying that I think it was James Hillman, anyway, some young man. He was talking about how in the Middle Ages, people built, built cathedrals because, because they're so embedded in the earth at that time. And, you know, they die at age 30, so 40 or, you know, or, or a plague or a war or death was everywhere. So, 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 so they, were, they were embodied and, and they never left their, their little medieval world. So, so it would make sense that they would try to build a ladder up into the, you know, into the sky, into the infinite to build huge, you know, columns of, and cathedrals, which are totally vertically oriented. It, it made sense from that perspective to be, um, yeah, to be, to be completely focused on the transcendental and on God. But today we've already built the skyscrapers and we've already, we've, we've already gone to the moon and we're trying to get to Mars, and there's this verticality which is which has gone insane, in a sense. And uh, and then so 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 the body becomes vitally important, not in our bodies, but just body of the earth, bo bo bodiliness, somatic experience, and and uh, you know I don't even like the word the environment because it's just it's just the body. So, so yes, I think embodied practices um, are, you know, are, are, are essential, especially in in the internet age where we, we, we it's so easy to become completely disembodied. And I would include the like the psyche and even perhaps the soul, whatever the fuck the soul means, within this definition of body as, as the kind of the imminent parts of uh, of being, as opposed to the transcendental or the otherworldly parts. 
Yeah. Like one of the things that even like psychoanalysis is really interested in is looking at the way um, a psyche fixates on certain abstractions or certain metaphysics as a way of avoiding the problems and the contradictions inherent in itself and its imminence. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things that will be really interesting to kind of tease out through studying and, and discussing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we can, we can bring that down to, to a very personal, personal level. Um, you know, I'm more f- familiar with the Jungian model. And, and uh, of course, of course, there's a sh- with every very bright transcendental thing, there's a shadow. If you bring Christ along, there's an antichrist. There's always an opposite uh, at work, and there's uh, you know, and whatever you create, and so, so, um, you know, whoever you are, you have a shadow, and that means that 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 means that the image you have of your, there's some part of you that's not not at all like the image of yourself. Like if you're a guy with a tie and a, and a suit, and you look very proper, you know, you're probably your shadow is probably this wild bestial character, right? So, so, so I think I think that's an interesting thing to look at is is this uh, dialectic between the the opposites. Mm. Yeah, uh, and I think it's part of again what... we're we're totally disembodied in our culture, and so we want somatic body, body practices and you know whatever's happening, we're going the other, we're moving in both directions. And I think part of the aspiration for what we're aiming to do with uh, with the Sangha is precisely to have a mix of uh, a couple of times a month groups where we're studying and discussing and thinking deeply about the works, the texts that we're interested in. And then a couple of times a month doing a kind of our own version of men's work where we'll, oh, and indeed hopefully women's work, if we can get some women interested, where we will be kind of trying to think about our own psyches, our own selves, our own souls, our own expressions in the light of what we've been thinking about and studying about. Right. So education can be fully embodied and fully, let's say, existential, fully related to your life. You know, I mean, you know, uh, so so that you can be on fire with with whatever it is that, that really matters to you instead of instead of just, you know, studying all these abstract things for no particular reason except to, to get a degree and, and, you know, get a job and, 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 you know, just join the meat factory. Mm. <laughs> um, so, yes, that's why it's, that's why it's so important uh, to be meditating on these things and deepening our understanding of these things on all levels too. Like, you know, I think of, Again, I was talking about the word tantra and how tantra is is weaving together of different ideas and different traditions and different um, styles of being, and and so so we have our intellectual mind, you know, which is 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 a you know works with abstraction, uh-huh. and then we have our whole you know emotive feeling, you know, path, pathic mind, which is which is caught in its own turbulence. Um, um, and then, you know, if I look at the Gurdjieff tradition, they talk about the three brains and then you have the, the body, which is, is movement and how you move and, and, and be, is, is how you express yourself in your body and your physicality. And so, so, so all those things need to be present in, in, a, in, a, in a complete educational you know, system, I would say. Um, and and what's, what, you know, what's unique about Tantra, what's interesting about Tantra, this is my passion is that it combines all those three things it, it doesn't it doesn't it's not one or the other like um Gertrude talked about the fourth way which is basically the same thing as tantra it's 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 um it's it's weaving together let's say all of these things that in in history you might have monasticism which is you know with a lot of study and meditation and, and seclusion um, you might have a monastic path, and then you might have a, a worldly householder path, and then you might have a yogic path. And but 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 he, but but the you know the 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 tantric path is when you weave together all of these things. Yeah, we, we including see. sex, including sexuality, and 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 um, including you know the most basic, you know, you know the stuff you put in your body, the chemicals you put in your body, the 
your 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 way of perceiving yourself mm. and, and the world and you know that whole transformation and transformational growth you know towards non-dual immediate experience mm. and it's gonna be really interesting to see how it plays out like already i know amongst some of the uh the students from last year, as you mentioned, like they hang out, there's there's friendships, and also like real projects being talked about, businesses being talked about. Yeah. yeah. And so there's like a real um orientation towards um well, a kind of fraternal communion, you might say. Yes. But then uh, like uh, hoping to do stuff. Yes, and that's why we wanted to preserve the men's aspect of the group. Because um, I don't think, you know, or the classes that we are teaching, there's no reason why women should not be involved or, or you know, you know, in that. But but the, the men, that's why the men's work is essential, because when men, when a bunch of men get together, they work on projects together. And there's no, co- there's, there's, there's tensions and there's ri- a bit of rivalry that arises, but what in a men's group, you people could deal with that. Right. But if, if it's, if it's women and men all mixed together, then, then, then um, often it becomes a seduction and, and, and gamemanship and, you know, um, which is all good as well, but we need, but, but you, we need to, again, we were talking about this in an alchemical sense, right? We need to separate the elements the masculine principle from the feminine principle and separate those two things so that they can come together and be very powerful in communion with, with each other. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's, it's kind of always been a principle of spiritual work that you have certain spaces that are male only or female only. Yeah. It's, 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 and, 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 the, and the entire world up until let's say the postmodern era, which tried to do away with that. Um, yeah. Perhaps because because because, because the, the perhaps because these had become too reified, you know, the, and, and they they become images of men and women, but nobody knew what that was anymore because they've become so reified. So you have to you have to, you have to break apart the whole. So there's um, something interesting even in that relative to what we've just been saying about kind of <laughs> moving away from the metaphysical absolutes of man and woman but then rediscovering the kind of imminence of man and women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, so you're, you're distinguishing between the metaphysical and, and the imminent. So imminent, it would be like the experiential aspects rather than whatever image we have of, let's say this is a man, right? He's a guy with like a, he's got muscles and he, he has a gun and <laughs> whatever. He's a tough dude, you know, and he brings home the bacon and and the women, the women are sort of walking, you know, they have a certain other style to them. And so, so we have these images of what they are, but the existentiality and the imminence of that is something far more mysterious and interesting and, and not obvious. Yeah. I, even I'm, though I don't want to throw, even though I think there is masculinity, it really exists and there is femininity it, really exists you know yeah well just in the same way it's like i think there really is religiosity and there is truth in religious symbols and Mm. in religious narratives and in religious practices but also they can get stuck at the metaphysical level and reified and i mean i guess the ultimate kind of absurd example of this is the kind of the fundamentalist view that the world was literally created according to the way the mythological narrative frames it is like kind of confusing the registers. Yeah, and I yeah, think of course. I, I'm kind of just speculating here, but maybe one of the things to think about the gender crisis at the moment is that, yes, there is a real thing as ma- masculinity. There is a real thing as femininity. Then of course we create symbolic structures and religions and ideologies around them that explain that thing. But then there's a tendency towards becoming too fixated on the mythologies and kind of uh, absolutizing, even fundamentalizing them. And so then there's been a kind of push against that, which is what much of the, the feminist movement and perhaps even the kind of social justice critique has been that why should we be defined by these uh, by these symbols? Well, 
well, exactly. Why should you be defined by them? But then what if you invert it and say, how can you use the symbols to actually live life more skillfully, more sexily, more enjoyably, more creatively? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, on one hand, we are, we are, we're, we're kind of encumbered by symbolism. We're, 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 we're possessed by ideologies and symbols and, and, you know, whether we want to be or not. Um, and, and, and the more conscious we become with, of that, we, the more we can use those uh, uh, symbols, um, you know, in a creative way, which doesn't, again, it's not a reification or, or a platonic ideal. It's a dynamic archetype, which can be explored in uh which can be it can be explored and, and which which changes you know over time i think the historicity is a big thing and and this you know you guys is hegel and the, so there's 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 there, there's all of those things happening and 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 um and so 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 what is our orientation right after deconstruction Maybe that's the question we're grappling with. I think it is. It's what is after nihilism or what is after relativism? Yeah, what is after postmodernism? What is after, uh, you know, what is the, uh, all these words like post-tragic metamodernism, all these words are people are trying to invent to describe something we don't really know what it is yet which is why i don't grab on to those terms right i don't i don't grab on and say hey metamodernism i want to ride that horse because i don't believe in it until it's actually um until i can actually until i until it's embodied and, and uh you know and i don't think in a way i don't think we really we in way we do invent the, those those movements and in a way we don't uh so it's like in a way, it's like the historical process that decides who we are. Like, rather than we're, you know, we create this definition of ourselves, and so we just, I, I don't know, we just, have, I, I want to keep on the reins of, 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 let's say, you know, sangha and dharma. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think kind of words that are kind of to do with community and process and processes of becoming. Mm -hmm. Whereas the kind of meta modern movement to me, or the game B movement to me as well, kind of seems to be attempts to reclaim some kind of fantasized traditional religious security. Perhaps without having to to invest in that in any way, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It's like it, it's it's easy. We don't want the dogma, but then uh, then the dogmas arise unconsciously. We want to throw away the dogma of the Catholic Church, and then well, you go to these meetings, right? And you find that they they, they become church like. You know, they become there's a there's a guy up there talking about something, and he might be talking about AI, but he's the priest, and and all the people sitting around are the flock, and they have a vocabulary, and they you know they have goodwill to it. So it's we're just reinventing the church, right? So anyway, yeah. Well, let um, me. It reminds me, like, uh, to me of uh, our friend Alexander Bard's book, Synthism, where I think the first line is "everything is religion," and I think it might even say in a few lines later, like, "anything that pretends not to be is lie." And I always kind of, I, I like thinking about those words. Yeah, yeah. It's the provocation. Like, I disagree because not everything is religion. There's, there's, there's. If you say everything is religion, then nothing is religion. Like you don't. I, mean, you know, but then you I, I would say there's perverted religion and bad you, religion. You open everything a is, is a version that could have good religion and bad religion. If, it, well, if yeah, it, it, everything's a degree, and then there's more or less skillful or more or less uh, truthful religions. But really, yeah. I, I mean, ultimately, it's building out the etymology of religion, right? Which comes from religare, which is yeah. what, the Latin word to join together. So that everything is trying to find symbols and practices and languages and rituals to join people together. Well, absolutely, yeah. That's what culture is, right? That's what society, that's what we do. So then, what's the difference between our religion, tradition, and, and let's say, you know, socialism? Well, I think precisely if if you want to take like a real juicy, meaty historical tradition, it's it's got. It, it kind of operates across symbolic. Uh, it works with symbols. It works with narratives. It also works with practices and communities. And, and this word, like processes of coming to be, 
Yeah. Whereas I don't think uh, modern ideologies, which I would include the metamodern and the game B within, uh, they do not, they're not deeply invested in processes of comings to be. They are in, interested. Like, uh, uh, of course, there's people working on psychotechnologies and meditations in all of these spaces. But I don't think it quite, it, it, it doesn't go deep enough. It still feels kind of non-committal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know, like I, and I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, a genuine religious tradition endures over over time. It's been tested. It's been tested to death, right? And and eventually, all of the bullshit gets exposed. And so, if Christianity, for example, is going to survive, you know, it has it has to find its core essence again. <laughs> um, you know, because so much of of what it's become. Is, is is dead religion right so so it's something like that if it has a core essence it will survive and uh, and same with all the other major major religions at this point you probably can't really invent a religion today but um you might plant the seeds of one but uh i mean i it's like how do you do or that? maybe maybe we are i don't know maybe the, maybe invented, the parallax song is, is, is a Christ new pseudo, religion. pseudo yeah, ideology pseudo was inventing a religion right i think no. the way religion grows organically is through skillful charismatic teachers building followings and then many many generations later they kind of get codified and institutionalized yes but which is why i'm skeptical of kind of thinkers who go, here's my absolute system and this explains everything and this is how it is and I adhere to this. And other, other people go, yes, I adhere to that. It's like the adhering to the system is wrong. You're kind of skipped. Like the, 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 it, it's the being part of the, the teacher's uh, new ways of being, new ways of valuing, you might say, in a Nietzschean sense. The teacher who comes along and says, no, there's a different way of doing things. Mm -hmm. right 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 yeah and so, it so, so that's the important right. thing is that there has to be a renewal all the time uh so so uh, you have to have a zarathustra to, to come 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 around and shake people up a bit you know occasionally um and declare that god is dead because because the the, the big idol is dead right um and that has to be declared dead you know periodically for for something to be reborn yeah and then lots of people seek a new idol but i think actually the the real work is to go into the death of god and to really go into the blind spots of what the old god didn't see mm. and that's the apocalypse today the uh the old god of culture up till this point has uh has failed in a that's sense. very that's very christian that's that's extremely christian because the old God is Yahweh, right? In the Old Testament. And here we are with the new God. No. Yeah. Um, so there's a way in which I, I like that and a way in which I don't. But anyway, all of these are, are discussions we can, we can, um, we can, we, 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 these are the kind of discussions we'll have at, at, the, at the Parallax uh, Sangha. We've gone off on a bit of a tangent, which we like to do. But yeah. Um, but but what is this? This is this is school. This is the sacred. This is um, this is friendship. This is this is what we do in the apocalypse. Yeah, it's the new Freemasons, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe. Again, I don't want to go that far. But the, but okay, you could you could be in charge of the youthful idealism and sexiness, and I can be like the the hermit with his staff saying like beating, saying no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Twenty more yeah. years, yeah, twenty more years, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's that's an that's also an interesting aspect to this is that me and you run this, and and you know I'm twenty years older than you, uh, so you have this vitality and you have this community of y young people. And, uh, you know, and I, and, and then I'm involved with, you know, Tom was my age. And, and so we have these sort of, I guess we have these groups uh, of different ages, which, which kind of come together. And, and I, I'm thinking about, I, I've been thinking recently about how the, the age groups, you know, how, how we can, tra the transmission that happens between the two age groups on bo going both ways. Right. So, so, so elder people, 
need young young people to to for, for the vitality, and then and then young people also need the you know, the wisdom of older people, and so we have this sort of exchange um, of generations, um, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And also tensions between the generations, because there's tensions between. In a sense, I I feel that as well. I feel like it's like I I feel like I feel like the, the millennials or the younger generations and guys like like you and Cadell come up and you, you you have a bit of a middle finger to 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 the fathers, right? And that's important. And then the fathers say, "Wait a minute, no, no, no." Yeah, yeah. I. I, I think it's uh yeah it's a uh, it's a fun and sometimes tense process to be part of but indeed but but that's that that's that's life yeah that's the yeah. other thing is 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 it's not about making this nice perfect utopian place where people could just feel happy and and, and you know it's 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 people who want really want to you know you know face their darker edges a bit but also have the, you know, where we have, where we know each other well enough that we have each other's back and, you know, uh, that we, we might, you know, hate each other one day and, and then, you know, but, but, but there's, a, there's a sense of support, but there's also a sense of challenge that needs to happen in, in a group like this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I keep saying this, but it's like, a, it's a, it's a place of coming to be. Mm-hmm. Then I think, I mean, something I noticed is that um, like a few years ago, I only knew guys my own age, except for the few older guys in my workplace and my parents, right? But once getting involved with um, these online worlds and with men's work, then really getting involved in intergenerational um, communities. And that's important. And I don't think there is actually, unless you happen to be involved in a community or hobbies or associations or something, then actually, like a lot of the guys my own age, I see they don't know anyone really older than them, unless they're people who they work directly under. And so then that sets up a kind of financial relationship between you and the guy who might sack you if you don't do your job. Like he has to sack you if you don't do your job. So there's, it's always um, the relationship, what you could say, it's always filtered through the uh, the media of capitalism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess, and the, the 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 social position of the person, rather than, for example, you know, Socrates and, and Plato uh, or whatever, hanging out and having an older friend and a younger friend and. And uh, you know, we're fighting and learning from each other. Hmm. And in that yeah. sense, this is always what religious and spiritual communities brought. You go to church on a Sunday, and you're with everybody from the village. And uh, right yeah. then, you at least kind of try to act as if the social distinctions don't matter so much. Yeah, and we were talking about the one room schoolhouse at the beginning of this project and the one room schoolhouse is what, you know, in an original educational context, the older kids would be lifting up the younger kids and, and there wouldn't be the stratification of age. And, and um, um, it's very comfortable to hang around with people, 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 your own age. And, and that can become a, a sort of a trap. If you just stay within your own, it, it becomes a ghetto, right? So, uh, yeah, so all of these forces um, is what we are, you know, working, working against. <laughs> and we, I, mean, I feel, I feel that we are working against a lot of dark forces. I don't know about you. What would you mean? Like working against in, in, in culture at large? Oh, well, I, I just feel that the, the, the level of unconsciousness of the contemporary culture is so intense and dangerous and uh, soul destroying that um, that that such such a community is 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 necessary to, to bring people back to their essence. Oh, for sure. I think contemporary culture is a nightmare. Yeah, a nightmare. Like yeah. art is dead. 
I was at the Albert Hall the other day watching the, a classical performance. And there was a contemporary piece beforehand, and there was like some decently composed music, I guess, but with like a just a woman ranting over the top about the environment and about Silicon Valley and about plastic in the sea and about institutional this and institutional that. And it was, I was just, I was like, I could do better. I could do better. I'm literally watching this in the biggest like hall of high culture supposedly in the land and yeah it's shit it's, it's a bread and, it's bread and circus game and it's yeah it's 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 gone it's dead it's not not alive anymore uh, yeah it's totally dead and everyone and, and when and i think becomes dead when it becomes top down politicized like that right where politics becomes the replaces art whereas whereas to genuinely shift the 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 culture the artist is not, you know, you know, an artist might comment on a political thing, but but there's a much deeper um, level of of communication which is is more effective. Well, for than, one thing, than, than any of than any of all that noisy, you know, polit polit politicking. <laughs> It like to continue on my rant about this thing. It's not even attempting to say anything really sophisticated about any of the the topics mentioned. It was like a kind of three minute kind of like expose to all like like okay. I think the longest maybe talking about Silicon Valley. She spoke for like two or three minutes or something. But it's a lot of just like I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned. <laughs> well, me too. Great. That's not fucking art. That's well, not. It's not. It's not thought either. It's not. Yeah. There's no. There's no thinking. There's just repeating. You know, certain kind of. No, it's empty performance. Signif signifiers and yeah, an empty. It's an empty thing, and so yeah. Uh, and I think one of the things I really care desperately about is trying to uh, <laughs> awaken some kind of creativity in others and in myself that can fucking do better than that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and and because because all of the resources are there, you know, um, uh, everything everything we need is is already there. That's what I that's what I've been thinking. It's like you don't have to go anywhere to get something anymore, right? Um, it, you have you have all the elements on your table in front of you here. You know, we have the internet, uh -huh. and uh, and so 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 so. It's it's just it's just a question of of attending to the right things, um, where we place our attention. Um, that's how I see it. But I'm a long time meditator, so how I see it is everything is attention. So everything is what you put put your attention, direct your attention mm -hmm. towards. Um, and if if you attend to something with intensity and and um, And, and you know, and clarity, and and all, all those things, then 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 you you create magic. <laughs> so so then then magic is created. It, and you don't create a a dogma or a or a, a pseudo religion or or a, you know a, any kind of fake movement of some sort. So it comes down to attention, and integrity, and. And, and community and and, uh, and and let's say um going up against uh going up against this constant voice in your ear that tells you to go to sleep you know to shut out shut down and become mechanical Gertrude said he said most people are mechanical like mechanic he called it mechanical man mm. so so um so I guess what you're describing is, okay, we have some beautiful art form that's turned into a caricature of itself, turned into an empty shell, and it's gone, gone completely mechanical. There's no spirit in it. Yes, I think that's it. We've lost the spirit or we've lost connection to really, I mean... <laughs> Like I said, I've been reading Crowley and Crowley is all about the will and doing your will. And maybe he gets a bit excessive with <laughs> do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. But he's kind of got a point. Like if you if you want to give him a charitable reading, he's kind of saying 
you are here with some kind of drive in the core of your being to do something. Yeah. yeah. And your ethical task is to discover that and to put yourself in places where you can do that. Yeah. And often that's a process of subtraction rather than addition. It's like removing the veils, removing the obstacles, removing the, um, the false thinking, removing the pseudo emotionality, removing all of these, all of these, you know, things that we've inherited um, and that are, that are, that are kind of gripping us like, like demons. Hmm. Yeah. So that's where we're going to. So hopefully at, at Parallax Saga, we could slay a few demons. Yeah, coming soon. <laughs>